I absolutely hate this. I don't know why it does that. I, I hit the button. It clicks. It doesn't start the promo. I don't know why. I hit the button, and the promo doesn't go. It just sits there. I don't know why. It hates me. Anyway, what's going on? I'm Phil Russett. This is Friday night. We have our usual weekly live stream where we uh, where Kenny and Will draw live some really cool stuff. We talk pop culture. I got some cool stuff to tell you, too, about my dinner conversation with my daughters with Star Wars. They make me so freaking proud, I have to tell you. Anyway, uh, so, you know, we, we always have fun. We encourage you to watch the show, talk with us, join in the conversation, spark a, a topic of conversation. Uh, and draw along with us. And when you draw, at the end of the show, you, you you Facebook DM me, and I will show your art live. Oh, wow. The man, the myth, the legend, Ricky the Dragon Silva, is here, and he is live. Look at this. Yo, 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 yo. What up, dog? I know that was so bad. Gerald's here. Yo, yo, yo. Without further ado, where there's a will, there's a way, Platon. How are we doing, everyone? We're good. Kenny, they killed Kenny Shazam Calderon. Happy Friday, everybody. And my sidekick, the proudest. Well, I'm so proud of this kid. We talk Star Wars, and she's so good. She's so smart. My big Star Wars fan, Melanie. No, it's not plugged in the headphones on right now. My kitten, co star Melanie. Say hello to everybody. Hi. Say yo 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 yo! What up, dog? Yeah, dog. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she, <laughs> she said, "Now I'm done," and she shut the door. <laughs> uh, she's just not in touch with her street cred, you know. Anyway, so, <laughs> so um, I'm not going to tell you why we were late. All that was funny, but anyway, um, how are you, gentlemen, doing this evening? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Uh, laying in some composition here to wrap uh, TMNT tonight and get back on uh, tragedy pages. Sweet candy nuts. Got a, got a little, it's a rally. Ooh, a little tragedy there for you. Oh, look at that uh, tease. Don't do that to me. Don't, don't, don't do that. You like casually slide it off, off camera. Well, that's a beautiful looking piece you got there. And that's not yeah, cold for a, anything. Give him a nice. Uh... <laughs> hey, Rick, gonna, what's going on? Go I'm going to drop in uh, a billboard right behind them up here, and uh, give it a cityscape, you know, with a with a water tower. Right. I want it to feel like uh, kind of like kind of like that rooftop in the uh, on the on the Coca Cola build, building from right. uh, from Highlander. Yeah, man. Cool. It's looking good, Kenny. I love it. I mean, I can, it looks amazing without the background. Looking good, Mr. Cat <laughs> Thank you. I, I just wanted to, Whoa. you know, give it, a, give it a, a very genuine New York feel. Yeah. Hey, Riley. Right. Uh, both my Kickstarter came. Oh, you got them both in the mail? Awesome. Uh, please let me know what you think of the stories. You could be honest. DM me and let me know. Uh, Rick, Rick is, uh, heading to bed cause it's like three in the morning near him, I think, but wanted to pop and say hello as I try to, as much as possible. What's going on? We haven't seen you in a while, man. And uh, I like your Ninja Turtles, uh, profile pic. Thanks for stopping hello. in. Rick is from the Netherlands, I think, right? Yeah. Not the nether region. Well, that's... that's a whole other story. Very cool. Very cool. So let's see. What are you working on there, um, Will, Sir Will of the Platons? So I am doing the cover for Wizard Issue 1. So last wow. uh, session we started uh, putting in the background colors. Wow. I did a little bit more work afterwards, doing a bit of stonework and and uh, sort of the light sources of the magma and the green pool there in the, in the corner. Uh, today I'm sort of underlaying the, the blacks. For the nice. figure and um, getting to probably the detail of the face, because then I'll, from the face detail, even though it stands in front of everything, I'll um, determine how dark my values are, bright my values are around the face. 
That's insane. Nice. By the way, real quick, I made a joke and it apparently triggered Rick. I know you're not in the Netherlands. I was joking. It was to make the joke about the nether region. It wouldn't have worked with Denmark. <laughs> anyway, man, way to ruin a joke for me. God. Uh, Matt Levine, really enjoying your show. If you get a chance, please check out the art of Star Wars artist Bill uh, Hughes with Matt Mercury in the Spaceway. It's very cool. We will check that out. Thank you, man. Uh, mm. We always encourage you drop links, so that's awesome. He said, Philip, I am always triggered. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, dude, first of all, I mean, I don't think a lot of people understand the process of gouache um, and then laying in the, the tonal values and things like that later on. It's 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 not this it's not quite the same as just painting with acrylic, which is hard on its own right. Don't get me wrong, but it's a little bit this different process. Um, but dude, the background looks amazing. What you've yeah, done, and uh, I love that you put the beast that shall not be satiated kind of its silhouette in the back there with the flames. Um, I love the, the magma coming down out of the, the, the fish that, you know, like golem thing there. It's all statue stone thing is awesome. I can't wait to see this thing rendered and done. Um, it's looking really good. Will. yeah, thanks. I, I hope it, it, it comes out as rich as I imagine it being in terms of, of color. Um, it just comes down to how many layers I put down and how carefully I lay that out. Because sure. with gouache, it can get muddy. So you've right. got to decide um, how your layers are going to go out before you do it. I learned that yeah. through trial and error. <laughs> yeah. Now, no, no, what you're doing right is this the underpainting, what you're doing right now? Yeah, I'm just blacking in the underpainting so that when I overlay my next colors, it'll have that much more darkness to it. Ooh. This is going I, to be I, good. I, I love the overall mood that that uh is yeah. being conveyed here like the the two opposing light sources that's like it's genius because that's i love how how rich and saturated those light sources are the 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 textures and the stone behind the throne that's man masterfully done so i don't know if you can see closely i kind of went over it with the old drew struzan's technique of the uh the brush and the, the flicking yes. to give me my stone rendering. Yes. Um, clean. A close up. That's super but, clean. Um, Very cool. Yeah, it's, it's tricky, but yeah, it's different in person, I guess. But it's um, maybe you can see some of that detail. But That's anyway, so uh, Rick, well. Rick was asking Paolo Rivera. He works a lot with gouache. Um. Don't know actually. Don't know. Well, what I will say is uh Joe is here. In where Joe Ryan says hey, Phil Kenny and Will. <laughs> One man. <laughs> One desire. One live stream. <laughs> Sweet candy nuts. Sweet. Chris Borman, what's going on? Candy. <laughs> very nice very nice and you're not even seeing the demons yet he's got chained up oh so yeah we've cool. got those down the bottom there we go it's going to be awesome i don't know i think they might be out of camera are they no they're there. no they're, they're in the shot that yeah, they look it. really good sweet candy nuts very cool awesome all right for some reason kenny's a little blur like white and and blurred well, not Kenny. He's Puerto Rican, but I mean, like the light is making it really white and blurred. Oh, it might be my my ring light. No, yeah, bright light, bright light. Joe Ryan said, "Looking stellar, gentlemen." Chris Moore Borman said, "That looks awesome." Rick says he loves working with gouache. Been a long time since he did it last. Mm. Um, yeah, man, I'm excited to see this cover finished, and. Uh, and Kenny's just continuing with these awesome 80s and 90s properties, you know, Thundercats, uh, who he's still going to finish, and this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and just going to be awesome. And, yes, all of this will be for sale. And guess yeah. what, folks? Mm. My website is almost complete. The oh, circle is boy. complete. Now I am the master. <laughs> it's um, completely operational. 
<laughs> this fully operational website. Um, so yeah, it's, it's thanks to Kenny who who really just created it and started it for me, and I can finish up. And because it's Square Space, I can upload and I can update the website as I see fit instead of relying on someone else, which is just fantastic. It's going to have, it's the philboentertainment.com. And that's my, my, my company. And the subsidiaries are legendary illustrations, Philbo, Entertain, uh, Philbo publishing and creator con convention. So um, we're going to have a live shop there with a cart and we're going to sell original art on there. We're going to sell tragedy, comic books, dynamics, uh, my prose book. We're going to have merchandise from Philbo publishing uh, and I and I, I came up with a great idea that Kenny thinks is a good idea, and I, I brought it up on the live stream yesterday, or was it the day before? I think it was yesterday. It was yesterday. Uh, I'm going to do a digital indie alley. I'm going to make my own comicsology basically type page there to support indie people, because comicsology obviously is not taking anybody on. And I think there's uh, another one where it's like digital world or indie world or something like that, which is cool. But uh, I'm going to be a lot easier to get on, and um, you know, I'm I'm going to be less discriminatory and and less vetting in the sense that I want to give uh, independent people a shot. Now, how it will work is I will take care of putting it up on the website. Uh, when someone buys the digital PDF, I will make sure they get the right. Uh, yeah, well, that never happened, Rick. So someone's got to fill the void. Um, so uh, uh, when they buy the digital PDF, I'll make sure it goes to that individual. Here's the perk. That individual is going to be giving me an email for it to go to. Well, I will go to the owner of that PDF, the creator of that IP, and they will get at the end of the month a breakdown of how many PDFs were sold, what was sold, to who it was sold with the monetary value, and the payout. They will also get um, that email, the email list. So I'm essentially handing you an email list of customers that that willfully gave the email for the PDF. So I'm helping you build an email list, sell your stuff, and I'm not taking any percentage of the sales because I will charge a very low monthly fee to do this per title. Now, per title, not per issue. Say you, I have five issues of tragedy and one issue of dyna dynamics. Well, five issues of tragedy is just a one monthly fee. It'll be like 20 bucks. 20 bucks, and I'm doing all the work for you and putting it up there for you. And I take no percentage. So say you pay 20 bucks to me for the month, and say at a $6 PDF, you sell 10, 20 of them. You're making anywhere from 60 to $120. It's a, it's a nice markup from 20 bucks, right? Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Pretty good. Now, the benefits, I'm always transparent. Yes, it helps bring traffic to my website. I also bring traffic to you and we help each other. Suzanne. Now the, the money I make isn't a lot, <laughs> but every little bit helps me. Um, and you know, because I gotta pay for the website, I have to pay for my email, I have to pay for these things. So um, and then, of course, I'm putting in time and labor to make sure that every month I'm sending out your payout and giving you your your um, breakdown. So um, if anybody's interested, DM me on Facebook and we'll talk and we'll do a live. I'm going to do a live launch for the website and we're going to have monthly sales, which will be highlighted on the home page. We will have monthly sales. And if any of those people that are in the indie alley want to do sales they can let me know and i will highlight it on the home page and will help promote them uh i do want to help the community i have to help myself as well but if i can keep that to a minimum and help the community i'd love to uh so what do you guys think about that that sounds very interesting i like it i think it's a great idea um you know it, it keeps it keeps uh, interest on uh, NDIPs, you know, and, uh, you know, fees for promotion and, and so forth would be, you know, I think one of the more grabbier qualities about that proposal, you know, for any right. creators. For 20 bucks, you get so much for the 20 bucks because as I'm promoting my website, it's just getting people there. Now, my old website... I would probably get about three to 500 views, you know, traffic of three to 500 people a week. 
at the old legendary illustrations website. We want to grow that. So if I'm getting thousands to my website at some point, which you see how I promote and market for 20 bucks, you know, um, rally, I'm looking into that. Uh, the problem is every time I find somebody that says they'll do the mask, uh, it falls through, they flake out, they don't get back to me or they, they change the pricing and it's just not worth it. But I am looking into that, my friend. I think that would be really cool to sell the tragedy mask. Um, we are going to have merchandise. Um, I want to have t-shirts, mugs, and some shot glasses, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to reach out to my buddy there, Moto Glass, to see about the, the glasses. He does beautiful steins and shot glasses and stuff. Uh, and we're going to really get this going. And it's all internal here. There's no going to an Etsy shop. There's no going to whatever. This is me. This is my website. This is me doing what I got to do. Um, and it's all centralized in the hub. And we'll have a digital indie alley. DIA. Oh, yeah. Uh, and as long as I have the room, we'll just keep adding people to it. And you, anytime you want to leave, you know, we'll offer... What I'll probably do is offer different payment ways. You could do monthly, you could do six months, or you could do a year. Yeah. You know, and maybe I'll add quarterly just so people can give it a try, whatever. Sure. Um, so for a very small amount of money, you know, you'll be marketed and you'll be you'll have a, a landing platform. And even if you have your own website, you're out somewhere else. It's another place for eyes to to land on you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then again, of course, it helps increase traffic to my website, which helps me. And I make a few bucks every month, depending on how many people join. Uh, so it's a win-win for everybody. Indeed. So those in the chat, what do you guys think? And Chris went to get a Powerball ticket. I hope you win. And then share with me. <laughs> and he'll be back to paint Slave Leia cover. Oh, nice. Nice. Um, so that's that. Now he's, he mentioned Slave Leia. I, I got to tell you about the Star Wars conversation I had with my girls at dinner tonight, which was awesome. So we were ranking our favorite Star Wars movies from best to least. And right. Melanie uh, started. Now they're younger, so they kind of are geared towards the, the prequel trilogy than they are to the right. originals. Unfortunately, not everything's perfect in the world. It is the way it is. Mm -hmm. Melanie's Melanie's order was she likes episode two, episode one, episode five, Empire Strikes Back, mm -hmm. episode six, episode uh, Return of uh, uh, No, I'm sorry. She liked, no, I'm sorry. She liked two, one, three, five, six, four, and then said to me, I don't want to rank the other three because they all suck. They're not considered Star Wars. I'm so proud of that kid. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, I did not put her up to that. Even when I let her watch those, I didn't give my opinion on them. She sat down and watched them and she's like, I can't believe they killed Han Solo. That's crap. You know, she didn't say crap, but she said that stinks. Uh they weren't all together, which stinks, she said. And then yeah. when she saw episode eight, she actually said to me, the second Luke Skywalker threw that saber over his shoulder, she goes, Luke wouldn't do that. I go, tell that to Kathleen Kennedy. But, um, yeah, Rick, you're funny. But, um, yeah, there's no spoilers if a movie's like a decade old. You know, <laughs> sorry. But, um, anyway, just get off your ass and watch, ass and watch it. Uh, Rick's kidding, of course. But um, Don't you dare and, spoil Indiana Jones next. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And then she <laughs> said, them bringing back the Emperor was a cheap gimmick. It really was. An, and at the time, my daughter was eight when she said that, or nine. And she said it was a cheap gimmick. And I'm so proud of her. She sees through the garbage. Now, Kaylee, she loves Revenge of the Sith first, because that's Kaylee. She would bend a knee to Vader, probably. But anyway, <laughs> with a cute smile, of course. I love you, Daddy. Now I'm a Sith Lord. Anyway, um, <laughs> next you're going to tell me Clark Kent is Superman. Um, I don't even know anymore. Right now, he, I don't know who Superman is. But anyway, um, so she likes three, two, one. No, yeah, three, two, one, five, six, four. And then she said if she has to rank the last three, it would be seven, nine, eight. Now, for me, 
It's Empire Strikes Back, then Return of the Jedi, then A New Hope. I know a lot of people complain about the Ewoks, but I liked it. Uh, then it's uh, Revenge of the Sith, Attack of the Clones, Phantom Menace, and I don't even want to rank the last three, but if I did, it would be seven, nine, eight. Uh, we didn't do Rogue One and all that other stuff. We just did the, the main episodes. Now, then we started going into five favorite heroes, five favorite Jedi, five favorite villains. Who are uh, the favorite and, heroes? Uh, you know, I expect them to say Leia and Padme, but nope. They said Ben Kenobi, Luke Skywalker, Anakin. Um, who else did they say? Uh, Qui Gon Jinn, they love a lot. Nice. And uh, uh, number five, and Yoda. That's what they both said. For me, it's definitely Yoda, Luke. Oh, Kaylee liked Luke uh, in her five, and Melanie didn't pick Luke. Neither picked Han, so I'm surprised. Oh. But anyway, for me, it's it's Luke. Um, Maul is my favorite hero, Rick said. Um, for me, it's Luke and Yoda. Uh, and Ben Kenobi, the young version of Ben Kenobi, those three, um, Han Solo, and R2-D2. Hey, John Katsis. Uh Villains, um, they loved, we all pretty much kind of agreed, Darth Vader, um, uh, uh, General Grievous, Count Dooku, Darth, Darth Maul, and Boba Fett. With the exception of uh, Kaylee liked the Emperor more than Boba Fett. Mm. And she said they kind of made Boba Fett a good guy now, so he doesn't count. So. What? No Jar Jar? Yeah. Thank <laughs> My kids think he's an idiot. Thank God. They're smart kids. And I'm, I'm serious. I don't force my opinions on my kids at all. Like, I let them watch it, and then we talk about it. And then I'll be honest about how I felt about it. I don't want to sway them. I mean, like I said, they like the prequel trilogy, trilogy more, and I'm old school. I love the original trilogy, but Thrawn, great villain. Yeah, Melanie wants to read the Thrawn trilogy, and, and she will soon, probably. Um, so then we talk about bounty hunters, and they knew Cad Bane and Aura Singh, and, uh, you know, it was just it was awesome. And they know Asajj Ventress as far as the – oh, she was another villain, actually, we said. Uh, when we went into outside the movies, we did five overall uh, villains. Asajj Ventress, we all agreed, was awesome. And Ventress Aura Singh. For sure. Oh, yeah. And Aura Singh is awesome, too. Bounty Hunter. Well, so. I'm, I'm like, not to cut you off. I'm, I'm just a huge fan of the of the old Dark Horse books. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, Jan Dersima created, what's his name? That, that Jedi. Uh, he's kind of Native American. Oh, what the hell is his name? And he was in the Clone Wars briefly. Um, oh my God, why am I th can't think of his name? Hang on. Uh, and he's cool too. Yeah, the kids. I just I'm proud of them because they think, you know, for themselves. They critically think, you know, and because they're they're true fans. Yeah. Um, they have seen the first season of Rebels and some of the Clone Wars first season, but they're in the middle and the process of seeing that now. Has anybody seen Tales of the Jedi, those cartoon shorts? They are good. Um, oh, Ahsoka Tana, is, it's her birth and, and her origin in there, and it's Count Dooku turning to the dark side in Phantom Menace to uh, clone, Attack of the Clones. Really wow. good stuff. It's really good. I recommend everybody watch it. It's it, it, You wouldn't think Disney was doing it because it's good. <laughs> <laughs> We just lost Bob Iger from the uh, live stream chat. Uh -huh. That's fine. <laughs> what happened? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, what's the name of the character that she created? I always but you gained that. Lucas. Now Lucas is on. <laughs> oh, and they love Ayla Sakura. Um, oh, yeah. Which she helped create. And Quinlan Voss. That's it. Quinlan Voss. Oh, yeah. That's my yeah. guy. Like, of all, of, of all the Jedi, I think he's, like, the coolest. By hey far, Zach, he was my favorite, my favorite Jedi out of that whole that whole run. Yeah, Jim I thought you'd be, a, thought you'd be a Kit Fisto man. Oh, uh, he's my favorite. He's my he's one of my favorite Jedi. He went out. They did him wrong, man. Here's the thing: Revenge of the Sith could have been an incredible movie, and it was it was a really good movie. It got I don't think it got enough credit to be honest with you because that last fight uh, with. Um, 
Kenobi and, and uh, Anakin was great. But mm -hmm. I thought that the Emperor fight with Yoda was a bit disappointing because they were just standing there in that little thing hopping around. I thought it could have been a little more movement. Um, mm -hmm. But um, what ruined it for me was pacing. Um, I didn't think that. the pacing was right because it, it's when you look back, you see how and why uh, Anakin bent the knee to him and gave in so quickly, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't articulated well through the storytelling, in my opinion. And part of that was pace. Now, the other thing is what could have been the most epic moment in all of Star Wars when they confront Palpatine and he mm -hmm. shows that he's a Jedi, he's a Sith Lord, and he does that flip and it goes, Whoa, and he comes out and he fights. Mm -hmm. That fight with the four Jedi could have been this fantastical fight. Instead, it was this slow paced, he just cocks back like this, and the, like they're all looking around, like, doo doo doo, what's going on? And he stabs one guy in slow motion, he goes, Oh, and then mm -hmm. he slashes the other guy, and he's like, Oh. And they're off the, the they're off the field in two seconds. They're off the board. It was dumb. And then it's like yeah. two slow motion, you know, blocks. And then he slashes Kit Fisto, who should have been in a, a, a more of a fight. And then yeah. him and Windu kind of had a fight to me that was on par with the speed oh, yeah. and um, choreography of A New Hope. And it's like, come on, guys, Mace Windu is supposed to be the best sword fighter, and you're fighting the the baddest Sith. To ever exist and we got this stiffness uh and then his death it's like how this didn't make sense to me either windu never trusted anakin and right. he's a jedi master who has force capability and you didn't know that you were pushing anakin to do that you didn't <laughs> feel that you didn't see that coming it just <laughs> it didn't make sense to me or the limited power <laughs> um, Richie Riley, what's going on? Windu's death was so stupid. Yeah, it could have been better. Yeah, Quinlan Voss, the Jedi becoming Sith, returning as a Jedi. I didn't know he became a Sith. Interesting. Dark Disciple, some of the best reasons. Yeah, I didn't read Dark Disciple. <laughs> so, Kenny just got destroyed. <laughs> so, yeah, so okay, nah, because what's he basing that on though? Like Dark Disciple, because there's, there's a story. There's a story in the Dark Horse books where. Quillen Vaz goes like undercover as a Sith because well, of the fact. I, I don't know. I don't know. I know there's a, a a prose book that I have. I haven't read yet called Dark Disciple. I think that's where he's talking about. So yeah, is the, is the Dark Horse stuff even considered canon anymore? No, no. Or they just throw it yeah. in the box of EU. No, what they do is they say it's not canon anymore, but then they pick and choose what they want to stay canon, yeah, they, like they, they did with yeah. heavily and Thrawn. Because. Because there's a there's a, there was a really good story where Quinlan goes undercover to infiltrate the Sith and and he's like believed to be an ally of Dooku and Ventress, right? And yeah. and it when he gets like revealed that he's a double agent, he ends up in this epic like fight with Ventress. It's probably one of my favorite like lightsaber duels. Cool. In, like whole mythos. All right. Very cool. And um, after Order sixty six, he he goes into hiding with uh, I'm forgetting her name. She was she was the pilot. She was she was a pilot um, for uh, these like mercenaries, right? That you know she she had a thing for him. He kind of had a thing for her, but like you know how it's like forbidden to have emotional ties. Yeah, you know, right. In the in the order, when Order sixty six happened, they both disappeared together. But you know, I I think that Quinlan Vaz was such a fascinating character because it was like when he was brought to the order to be trained. They were scared to train him, just off the off the off of knowing that he could have teetered either way. You right. know, yeah, right. towards yeah. towards the light or towards you know the, becoming a Sith. Like it, there was, they immediately recognized the darkness in his heart. <clears throat> Very cool. Yeah, man. I I never read the Dark Horse stuff, uh, but they have them in co collected omnibus, and I want to I want to get those. Uh, I heard it's some great stuff. stuff. Yeah. 
So Rick said, the reason why Tales of the Jedi was so great is one man, Filoni, enough said. And that's true. Yes, Tales of the Jedi really. is solid, solid stuff. And it, it, it kind of, it, it fills in some gaps of things. Like two shows that filled in gaps that I always gnawed at me. And they all revolve around Attack of the Clones, okay? The first one was Dooku, how he just shows up out of nowhere in three and, and, and you know, at, you know, I mean, in two... Uh, after Maul was destroyed, and you know, cut in half, and how did that come about? This explains it. What happened to Yaddle, which is the female of the species from Yoda? It explains it, um, which was very cool. It shows um, Dooku when he was a Jedi and how he turned. It explains how the archives were erased when Ben Kenobi goes in to check out what's going on to try to find about the clones. Mm -hmm. It explains the clones. And then Bad Batch explains... Order 66 better for everybody because it wasn't really clear. Now, the only thing left for me is they need to go into General Grievous background, who he was, because there were Wikipedia once said he was actually, um, what's his name? Master Sifo Dias. When they killed Sifo Dias, they turned him mm. into a cyborg and he's General Grievous, but they amalgamated him. They put him together with this other native, uh, not native, um, alien character who was you know also in this so and then but then i think they retconned it or they changed it and now it's this other character uh grievous became the cyborg after he died so i'd like them to to fix that I've that's lost a bit of a mess isn't it became one of the stronger jedis to survive bit. yeah because i remember in the film didn't he say i've been trained in your fighting styles or techniques or something when he's fighting kenobi i'm sure he said yeah. something like that yeah, I mean, and uh, I really highly recommend the best. Right now, for me, the Star Wars properties that Disney are doing that are feel like Star Wars and are quality are Andor, Tales of the Jedi, The Bad Batch, and Mandalorian. Boba yeah. Fett was okay, but there was a lot of bad with that. Like the things that they just didn't write well. Uh, ben Kenobi, everybody knows how I feel about Ben Kenobi. Mm. Um even the last fight with Vader was okay, but it could have been so much better. Um, yeah. And the lead up, I think, had a lot to do with why you were disappointed in that final fight. Um, uh, Star Wars Visions on Disney Plus. Yeah, I um, I watched Visions. Uh, oh, I didn't see the second season. I think this is the second season, but I watched the first season and I didn't see anything about Grievous. I have to check that out, Chris. Um. You know, the funny thing is, Boba Fett is the one that should have been spanning the galaxy. They could have done the Bounty Hunter Wars, had him going after something. Um, but you know what the problem with Boba Fett was? They did Boba Fett already, and it was called The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. Think about it. We loved Boba Fett because he was mysterious. He was badass. He was tough. And that's what they made The Mandalorian. He never took his helmet off. He was, he was straight-laced. He was tough. And he was bounty hunter going all over to different planets. Well, that should have been Boba Fett instead of creating the Mandalorian. They should have just done that with Boba Fett from the start. Mm -hmm. And they didn't. So for them to take Boba Fett and do the bounty hunter wars or put him in space would have been too redundant to the Mandalorian. And it, it wouldn't have gone over well. So they had to change it up. So you took the guy that shouldn't have been grounded on Tatooine you should, or any planet. He should have been space faring. And you grounded him. Now you go to Ben Kenobi, who's supposed to be grounded on Tatooine, and you send him everywhere. Mm -hmm. And Ben Kenobi failed his mission the second he left Luke. He wouldn't leave Luke. He promised Yoda for the sake of the Jedi's future, he will protect Luke. And he left him vulnerable. Yeah. I mean, not only to leave a child vulnerable, but the kid doesn't even know. So he's even more vulnerable. So that was the big faux pas for me there, just as far as storytelling. Um, can I get past it? Sure. If it's a good story, it's a good story. You know, not everybody's perfect. But then you make Ben a weakling and a coward. We have to break down the hero and have some obscure character you never heard of build him up again. I just don't like that trope. I don't. Uh, to me, a hero has doubts, has pain, has suffering, questions if, if, if his path is the right one. He has all of that. But he stays the course. He doesn't mm -hmm. quit. 
that's the strength of the character, right? That's that's the point. And they keep I think I think that down. that that method of storytelling has its place, but Disney's just overplayed it. Like it's just everything Agreed. is the same. And I think the big issue with the Star Wars now is not really. I think that's why Filoni and Favreau are doing such a good job because they're not really adhe adhering to what the story group is wanting them to do. The problem is the Disney's the, the Star Wars story group that are dictating yeah. all the timelines and all. Yep. And I don't think they they're just not doing a very good job, and it's just not. They don't working. know the property, and they're and they're ignoring George Lucas. They don't want his input, and right. uh, you know. I blame they screwed the fans. Up. They screwed here's up. Here's the thing: is the fans get mad about what Disney's doing. It's the fans' fault, and I'll tell you why. When George Lucas did the prequels, they shit on him. They got nuts on him. Yeah. They yelled at him. They blah blah blah. He's ruining it. Blah blah. It was his creation, and he's ruining it. He's doing what he yeah. wants to do. He, you know, what are you doing? Now, I don't think the prequels get a fair shake. No, they had their faults. There was yeah. a lot of pacing problems. Uh, I don't think he should have done the first movie the way you did, but he geared it more towards children. Fair enough. Which I think was a bad... He was trying to get new fans on board. So it was a smart business move, and it worked. But he did try to give us fan service. And I'll give you an example. We always wanted to see Boba Fett. Well, he made Jango Fett. He always mm -hmm. wanted to see Boba Fett go up against Luke or a Jedi, right? Well, he did. Ben Kenobi fought Jango Fett, and that was a good fight. You mm -hmm. saw the rocket. You saw you know everything. So he gave you that. And then when he gave you Yoda fighting Dooku, I don't give a shit who you are. There isn't a person on this planet that didn't jump out of their seat and go, oh, shit, this is awesome. When Yoda said, Aah! and he started freaking flipping around like a, like a ninja monkey. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That was some cool shit. Now, Actually, I Revenge didn't like the, it. <laughs> Revenge of the Sith, the other thing that disappointed me, you didn't like it, really? Yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I, it, I just felt... I don't know. It just didn't feel like Yoda to me. I thought it was a bit much. But he was tapping into the force to fight. That was the point. Yeah. He was tapping into I just the didn't force. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> I liked I liked Dooku versus uh Kenobi and, and Anakin. I thought that was excellent. Yeah, that was good. I um the other thing that was disappointing is in Revenge of the Sith, Kenobi yeah. fighting General Grievous could have some been so much better. But in five seconds yeah. he chops off two of Grievous's arms. Grievous was if you saw Grievous in the um the what's his Tar Tardoski or whatever his name is the cartoons, he yeah. would literally stand on one foot, have the the six sabers out of his arms, and hold one in his other foot, and he was taking out Jedi left and right. He almost yeah. killed uh Moody, what's his name? Kudi Mundu. Um good night, Rick. Yeah, Mundi and you know, and a bunch of Jedi, and all of a sudden he can't give a better fight to Kenobi, that was disappointing as well. And I, I yeah. again, I thought Revenge of the Sith was a movie they should have made three hours and they should have extended those fight scenes and made them better. Uh, and I and think I, then I, I it would have been that's amazing. Why, going back to your, your idea about the scene with um, the Emperor and him being arrested, I mean, it doesn't, it just never, it, did, it didn't hold up how quickly they were just slain. Like, they just kind of right. stood there and got attacked. Right. Um, even though they had their sabers drawn, I mean, you got Kenobi took out Grievous, but and took out Maul. They were both trained by the Emperor. Um, but but these guys just stood and got taken out. Like I, I and they well, seemed Grievous like they was trained by Dooku. Experience. Right, but yeah, and yeah, to that point. But I suppose you know it just felt like they were just taken out way too quickly, considering the training and the experience that they had. You know, like. All the adventures that had all the, you, you said they never got into a, a battle where they really were pushed or challenged. Like, right? Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't. Yeah, it felt it felt short to me as well when I watched. It. I was like, oh, really? I wanted to see a bit more. Yeah, yeah. it just fell short. I agree. Uh, I got some art to show, guys. Hang on one second. Mm. Um, we've got the Slave Leia by Chris Borman. Oh, let's have a look at this. Uh, it's in early stages. It's a rough pencil he's going to paint tonight, so keep that in mind. Well, that's looking pretty good so far. Yeah, it's roughed out, and he's going to paint it. Very cool. That's Chris Borman, who also the statue. Oh, nice. And Zach Rodriguez well, painted a Hulk. 
I'm going to show you a Zach Rodriguez Hulk, which is really cool. I love that people like to join in and share their art. I think it's fun. I think it's a unique thing yeah. that we do on this show, uh, and I like it. And this Hulk came out great. Check this out. That did That's come out really Zero, Zach Rodriguez. Yeah, Check nice. out his art. Drop your links, Zach. You too, Chris, if you want to drop links. If you guys do commissions for people, drop links. Please, go ahead. Solicit. It's just fine. You know, and the girls and I, we came up with Jedi names. Do you want to hear <laughs> what our Jedi names are? Go for it. We have fun, man. Come on. My kids have fun. Okay. So... Kaylee came up with her own name. Mind you, she's eight years old. Gamora okay. Sakura. Okay. That's a good one. Melanie is Melani Fitora. I like it. I'm Philo Renvella. Interesting. My mother is Crin Castus. I like that. And too. Stephanie is Sulcata Dulcis. So how did you come up with the names, Phil? I don't know. Just made up shit that sounded like maybe it was just... <laughs> <laughs> It was just for fun. It was not like, you know, it's not like I was creating a comic where I had to really come up with a, like really serious names. It was just us having fun at a diner, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah. getting worked up and excited. Uh, Chris Borman said, nice work on the Hulk, Zach. Um, Glenn's a big Star Wars fan. I'm working on a logo for a local business that unfortunately can't be seen publicly yet. All right, Joe, when you when you get the chance, show it to us and we'll we'll we'll, we'll uh, show it when you have the when you're able to. Um and uh Gerald, are you drawing? I don't know if Gerald's still with us. He might be uh have us in the background while he draws. So for me, I I I love the original Star Trek cast, and I did like some of the movies with The Next Generation. But I'm always more of a, a Star Wars fan because of the spirituality of the Jedi. And let's face it, they have powers and lightsabers. It's fucking cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm also a big fan of Captain Kirk and his whole, you know, ideology and thought process. And, and Wrath of Khan was amazing and stuff. And I can't wait to show that to the girls. Just right now, they'll be a little freaked out by the bugs, slugs going in the uh, in the ears and stuff. You know, and I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not dealing with nightmares. I need to get some sort of sleep with my three hours. Um, uh, but uh, Star Wars to me, like I was never into the military aspect of Star Wars or the political, right? The reason is the political allegory is pretty much what's going on, you know, in the world today, you know, this is how Liberty dies with thunderous applause. To me, it's so apropos, it's ridiculous, but, um, I like the escapism of the Jedi and uh, I think most people do, but I will yeah. say bad batch was good. And I, I haven't watched the second season yet because I'm waiting for the girls to catch up on the first one so that we can watch it together. But bad it's batch is good. good. Yeah. Second season's good. Good. I heard we'll it was really stepping up. Yeah, it was good. Now, mind you, for Christmas, uh, I found a sale. It was really great. Four lightsabers. Two are shorter for the kids and two are long for the adults. Build your own lightsabers. They came with all the sec the separate pieces. We put on Empire Strikes Back. Nice. And we ordered a pizza. And we put our lightsabers together. And we picked the hilts that we wanted. And we put them together. And we, you know, and we... Uh, that's what we do here, man. I mean, I didn't have this growing up. You know, my my dad thought I was a loser for all this stuff. But uh, these kids, man, we watch Thundercats. They watch X-Men from the 90s. They watch uh, uh, Silverhawks. They watch Thunder the Barbarian. Dude, when I'm in the car and they're in mm -hmm. the back seat and they start singing the thund humming the Thunder the Barbarian theme song, I could not <laughs> be more proud, man. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, they watch the Hanna Barbera cartoons. They know those characters. Um, uh, yeah, man, I'm proud of them, and they they, they just gravitate to it. They love um, the Justice League and Justice League Limited. 
Oh, that's a great cartoon. I love that yep. cartoon. Yeah, Unlimited. Yeah, they loved the Just League Unlimited and Just yeah. League. They watched them religiously. Um, yeah, they, My they watched them. Yeah. yeah, and uh, we just, you know, and they always check out. Oh, what's are they like? Spider Man's Amazing Friends. Uh, so yeah. it's just awesome. Yeah, man, we we just have a blast. They watch He Man, She Ra. Uh, unfortunately, Kaylee likes the new She Ra, but Melanie thinks it's crap <laughs> as it is. Yeah, I wonder how the new X Men cartoon is going to be as well. It's supposed to continue from the the first season, you know, the la the original, uh, mm -hmm. with the same animation. I'm going to be honest, I didn't like the animation or the art in that '90s yeah. X Men story. I wanted to see Pride of the X Men animation continue. That was the animation yeah. they used in Spider Man's Amazing Friends. That's what I wanted mm -hmm. to see. Lords of Light, yes, Zach. That's right, Lords of. Listen, Thunder of the Barbarian is a cartoon that I'd love to see them do big budget live action. It could be so good. I mean, that was an epic cartoon. It was like a movie, if you think about it. It starts off showing how the world is torn asunder and it becomes post-apocalyptic. And you've got the Star Wars tropes in there, the Lord of the Rings tropes in there. It was, oh my God, it's so good. The mm. Sun Sword. I'm still waiting for them to do a proper Masters of the Universe movie. Yeah, but but you know what it is? I think Thundar is easier to make because it's easy to make that backdrop, right? A post-apocalyptic yeah. drop. They've done it a million times. And you can make the Sun Sword, simple special effects, and just put them in the costumes. And Ukula, with you know, with CGI or special effects, you can make Ukula. So I think you could do yeah. that big budget easier than you can. And, and there's a smaller cast, right? Master of the Universe, there's so many characters, so much going on. Um, but I would like to see that. They, they've been talking about Thundercats too. But if they do a Master yeah. Universe, they've got to make Skeletor badass because he's such oh, they've got to. crappy. Yeah. He's such a wimp in the comics and the cartoons. That's how he man. He was pretty good in the movie. The that was good. I thought Langella did a good job as Skeletor. Yeah. Yeah, he had like he. You could tell he was having fun with it, dude. Like. He wasn't you know, a problem. <laughs> he's he's the That's only true. reason why that movie isn't a total catastrophic failure. There's a yeah. lot of reasons why that thing is is a, a cult classic that really sucks. But it wasn't Langella that was a problem, like Will said. He was the one solid thing they did. Yeah. Dolph Lundgren was not a good choice. I don't care. And he had he had a great build, but he wasn't the choice. And uh, you know. The character choices they made in there, and it was like silly. The little, the, you know, and the, what's his name? Yeah. Warwick Davis. Was it? No, not Warwick. Oh, the other guy, the, the famous dwarf. Yeah. I, am I allowed to call them dwarves now? I don't know what the proper. I mean, you used to say midget, that was rude. Then it was little yeah. people, that's rude. Now, then it was dwarves, and that was rude. So I don't know what you call them anymore. I think dwarf um, is okay. I don't know. I, I just, I don't want to offend anybody, you know? So, um, I'll say this though. Speaking of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, yeah, man, that that '90s uh, movie was was freaking awesome. Indeed, indeed. Um, you know, which one? The first or the first one? Yeah, the original. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I got a couple of things in the chat. Hang on. Uh, Rally said something, and I meant to go back to it, and I forgot. He said something about yeah. wanting to be a demon in Withered. Where'd you no. go, Rally? He wants to be a demon. Yeah. Uh, oh, I just finished playing Star Wars Fallen Order. Great storytelling. He goes, I want to be one of the demons in Withered. And he's like begging. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Rally, send me a photo. We'll see what <laughs> we can do. Send me a photo close up of your face. We'll see what we can do. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll try. As long as you, but you got with the photo, I need you to give me written permission that we can use your likeness. Okay. Um, I didn't play Fall in Order because I haven't had time for video games, but I'd like to. It was a good we game. Got, yeah, good. they're doing a Cal part Kestis, two. right? Yeah, it was good. If you like those kind of platform style games, you know, yeah, you like it because it's really well done. Uh, Christopher Stromlin said second season of Bad Batch is good. Chris Borman said it's a different pace for Bad Batch, but he's been enjoying it. Mm. 
You know what? I, I, I don't know why they don't do this. I think it would be huge. Tell me if I'm wrong. No. Do an animated, and I don't mean, well, you could do it in a digital like Clone Wars style, or you could do a traditional cartoon animation. The original team. Of Luke, Leia, Han. Oh, Chewie. yeah. Yep. Why not? And you put them on adventures. I mean, first of all, did you ever read Shadow of the Empire? It takes place, it's a book that takes place between Empire and Jedi. Great story. Mm. Great story. And then the I, I wouldn't trilogy be surprised if that's what they're going to do, Phil. I mean, now they can, now they can um, pretty much deep fake, like when you watch Boba Fett, how good Luke looked in that. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they're heading towards doing that. Anyway, with the original cast, you know. But why not? I mean, you could do, you can continue their adventures like they're kind of doing with Luke and Mandalorian. I think that mm. would go over extremely well. Yeah. Well, that's uh, look at where the look at the attention it got. Yeah. Everyone wanted to see Luke as he should have been, and that was how he was in Mando and and Boba. Luke as we wanted him to be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised they don't spin off uh, a show. Why not? Charles oh, W. Morgan is in the house. If you yeah, want to they, talk about the underbelly of, of uh, Tatooine, Charles W. Morgan is in the house. Hi, hello, Phil, Kenny, Will. You guys are creating some masterworks here. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Charles, why don't you DM me? Uh, you know what, Charles, can I show that page that you just put up of Cold Cutter 2? Charles did a great job drawing this car and doing a car chase scene. Good stuff. Nice. Can I show that that um that page, Charles? If not, let me know. But if so, I will put it up. The cutter is cool. So for me, the best properties to exist are Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. And they've shat on both of them. It's such a shame. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's I think it's their attempt to bring in new fans and try to appropriate the IP to a, a, a more modern perspective. Is yeah, but I always think they don't understand how to do that. I mean, I'll give you an example, and maybe this sounds arrogant. Forgive me, but like you've read Tragedy, right? Yep. I've been told it's kind of like 80s writing with 90s art. Um, yep. But the truth is, it's it's age appealing from any any adult. I, I mean, you could be a new reader of Generation and enjoy it. You could be a reader from these and still enjoy it. There's a yep. way, and I, I know it sounds arrogant. I'm not saying I'm a great writer, but I'm just saying there is a way that you can write universally for people to enjoy and still sure. pick up new readers. You because, Well, you're trying to target new readers you're alienating old and all you're doing is balancing out or in the case of marvel and dc losing out because you lost your faithful readers for people that are not jumping on board mm -hmm. check this bad boy out this is a great page by charles w morgan cold cutter 2 coming soon Ooh, very well done yeah very well done. oh that's nice look at that car Oof. right and that's hand drawn. Yeah, that's not a photo it. reference. He didn't. He didn't Photoshop that. Nothing. And then look at the way that he has nice. it spin out and the bottom left panel and panel. Number yes. Four. Great job. That, that luster is great. You had me at muscle car. Indeed. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. Excellent work. Excellent work. Now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. Um, <laughs> Charles W. Morgan. Fire Marshal Phil. Yes. <laughs> I didn't, when I met Charles, I didn't know he was an artist and he told me he's doing this book and then he showed me. Yeah, I know it's a 69 Chevelle. Um, and he showed me his art and I was like, wow, this, this guy can draw. I didn't know he was this good an artist, but he is leveling up in book two. Absolutely. I mean, he really is level leveling up in book two. And that first car panel alone tells you that. Um, and just the action that's going on. This guy um he can draw man and he can ink and he's and he's writing the book and the book is well written and it's a solid story and kenny has a cover on book one uh nice. will doesn't because i think he thought he sucked but anyway 
And <laughs> so, I mean, and Cole Cutter too is just he's up in the game. The art is even better. The writing is continues to be solid. And uh, Charles is just putting all his love into this, you know, on the side of his day, you know, his business that he runs during the day. So you guys got to go out and you got to come out in droves and support Charles for Cold Cutter 2, which will have a catch up for Cold Cutter 1, because this is a dude you want to support. He's one of the good people in life, but also it's a quality, quality, solid book. So you guys got to check that out. It's Cold Cutter 2. Um, I will be putting the Kickstarter page together for Charles soon. And we're going to do this. Indeed. Let's do this, Brutus, because I ain't doing this. I knew that was coming. <laughs> At some point, it was coming. Of course, man. I'm cliche. <laughs> coming, 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 soon soon mer- coming soon to a merchandise, mer- merchandise store on the what website, Phil? Philboentertainment.com. There you go. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Are we going to be stocking Joe Ryan action figures? That's what I want. Oh yeah, and uh, you know what, Kenny, we have to put a graphic on the homepage of Joe Ryan casually, slowly walking away from a big explosion. <laughs> Easy. In a world where Philbo Entertainment clashes with the great Joe Ryan. Yes. <laughs> Might get a bit of a uh, bit of Mr. Powers After Effects flame explosion behind. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Love it. In a Dude, world uh... where the internet is too small for one man. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, uh, last night before I was like one in the morning, and I was I was on the phone with Alex, but. Uh, I had Amazon on, and they were showing all these trailers for these old <laughs> horror films from 1980, 81, like Hotel, Motel Hell, and nice. uh, The Howling, and Prince of Darkness. And nice. that dude's voice was on there, yes. and it was just, oh, it was great. <laughs> it was so great. And all I did is start laughing, thinking about what we do. It's so oh, funny. It <laughs> There's a great doco on um, on Shudder, on the horror ne- on the horror network, and um they got a documentary called Into the Darkness, and it just looks at 80s horror films like from 1980 to 1990. And it, at the end of every clip, every trial is that guy, and he just, like, says one word, you know, like, <laughs> Gator. <laughs> <laughs> Ghoulies. Critters. You know, just a, not even, like, yeah, the trailer would show, like, 90% of the movie. Like, we'd go for, like, five minutes. Yeah. And then it'd be just one guy at the end just saying, you know. Critters. <laughs> Creep show. <laughs> oh, man. So hey, funny. Gino, what's going on? Greetings. Thanks for coming out. Charles, I just tuned in. What has happened to your accent? Who? Whose accent? What do you mean? Talking about the guy from the prison island? <laughs> <laughs> Which is more apropos than you think these days. Um, hey, look out. <clears throat> hello. You're doing a great people job. On my door in a minute. <laughs> yeah, really. Hello. Dude, that's a great job on the metal on his on his shin guards. Wow. Beautiful work. Shiny, shiny. Dude, I can't wait for you to do Colossus and the legendary portraits. Yeah, it's coming up. Come on, I gotta get I'm doing a um I'm filming the Doctor Doom as I'm painting it. So Sweet. if you're ever keen to paint along with me, um you can do that with the new video. It's coming up. Very cool. You know, I step wish you guys step. I wish you guys lived close because I would literally uh do a small show satellite show and have an area for live painting and like yeah. where people can join in, you know, it'd be fun. We just put up a bunch of easels. Carlos yeah. Ramos in the house. Hi all you guys rock. What's up, Carlos part of legendary family. Uh, Gino, not much, sir. Enjoying the night playing some Madden 23 sweet candy nuts. <laughs> I used to play Madden a lot. I don't have time for video games. And if I even did have a moment to play video games, there's no way my kids are letting me. <laughs> they jump off! They literally jump on me and knock the remote out of my hand because they're like, "Daddy, play with us!" <laughs> Tackle me! <laughs> I'm not kidding. So Carlos Ramos has an art book on my current campaign. So does Will. So does Kenny. 
So do all the legendary artists. Yeah, I'm good at that shit, man. You gotta admit, I'm good at that stuff. But seriously, the new campaign has art books and art commissions. What are you guys waiting for? See this art right here? If you want this kind of quality art, not a gouache painting, but black and white illustration from these guys, you there are tiers on my current Kickstarter campaign for the Dynamics where you can commission a full figure, black and white, you know, inked with full background by any of these artists. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it's yeah. only two twenty-five. I'm sorry, but people charge five hundred dollars these days on on pieces like that. Two twenty-five, and you get it. And we're pretty quick. We don't, you know, you don't hold off for six to eight months. You'll get it within three months. Yeah. So what are you waiting for, people? people? Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying. So should should I bore you all and show you the campaign? Go for it's not it. boring. It's not boring at all. Pushing. I got a cover on it. I always got to show. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> the dynamics. <laughs> I was really hoping to get to three grand by Monday, but that ain't happening. If you're in the audience and you have not backed this book, I'm going to ask you to give it a shot. There's a $6 PDF or a $15 book. It is totally worth it. Why? Because I said so. Anyway, um, Phil Bullishing, the dynamics. Pretty cool print that we're not going to unlock. Rock Power is looking all street cred badass. <laughs> so there's a nice little plant in the back. Yeah. Um, Rob did a great job. It's a fun all ages superhero tale. Adults can enjoy it too. There I am with my dad bod, Kenny Calderon cover. Yeah, boy. Shazam. But 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 wait, it gets worse. No. We got blank sketch covers if you want art. We've got the studio cover. We've got Ricardo Silva, Ricky the Dragon left probably right after he said hello, you bum. Anyway, we got this cover. We got this cover. That's Addie Kid's cover. We got Martha Schwartz, me to Schwartz be with you cover. <laughs> we got the Steph Wilson cover. Did you say Steph Wilson? But I don't see boobs. That's okay. It's still an authentic Steph Wilson. Otto's <laughs> a potter. Ain't nothing like a 10 year old uppercut and a big hippo. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. Shazam. Great color on that too. Yeah, Motto yep. did it himself. He Motto's colored a lot of my covers. Like that that Ian Churchill, the blue cover, that's yeah. Motto. Yeah, he covered a lot of great covers from he knows what to do. Um we're not gonna unlock these unfortunately. When we're not gonna get to these, it doesn't look like uh to unlock them unless something spectacular happens. Like you guys just start to get a bunch of commissions. <clears throat> Uh, or buy a bunch of books. <clears throat> Here are the legendary art books. And there's a trailer. Should I show the trailer for the legendary art books? Show oh. the trailer. All right. By the way, this music is inspiring. If you really sit down and listen to it, it's it really uplifts you and inspiring. So, Gino, pause the game and pay attention for a second. Uh -huh. Please, let's do it. Kickstarter happened already, but you can get these books if you missed the Kickstarter on this current one. Thank you. 
are available art commissioned by the artist and i'll show you some art samples below but but, 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 but but wait there's more like crazy eddie our prices are insane all right so got tragedy <laughs> if you have not been paying attention tragedy is getting reviewed really well issue five is about to come out so this is the best time to pick up all four issues to be caught up just in time for the May launch of Tragedy Number no. Five, which is the climactic finality to the first story arc. And I'm serious when I say this, this one's a doozy. Now, Charles, you received Tragedy Four in the mail yesterday. Is that correct? And if so, uh, hopefully it's a good review. <laughs> what is your review of that book? I'll take a chance. And that you'll say something good about it, hopefully. <laughs> By the way, make any one of these a virgin. Make any one a virgin foil. And here are some art samples. This is for sale. I have this original gouache painting. It's for sale. I'm not playing. Call me. We'll talk. Um, <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, another of the best cartoons ever made, Ricardo. That's in the art book. That's in the art book. Beautiful, really emotional, Mr. Freeze. Awesome yes. stuff. Indeed. Shazam. Indeed. Um, Rod Rodolfo Samurai. Samurai. Yes. Mashup of Ghost Rider Wolverine. Look at that strife by Carlos Ramos or Ramos. It's great. Mm -hmm. Opens with lots of action. Incredible double page spread sequence, too. What about the story, man? Is the story any good? <laughs> he is the best Dr. story. He looks great. The pit. <laughs> the pit. Look at that by Alex Sarabia. God almighty. That is so Indeed. damn good. That's just so amazing. Oh, my lord. And then we got Models of Potter. The story is good. No spoilers. But yeah, don't, don't. And next, I'm telling you, next issue of tragedy is is it's not a marketing ploy. It's it's really good. It's really good, and it's balls to the wall, fight after fight after fight. And but it's also introducing villains and and setting up more plot points going forward. Good stuff. And you can get these kinds of commissions if you get original authors. Look at this by Kevin Stewart, Ghost Rider versus Spawn. Sweet candy nuts! Look at that. He's back. He's back. And so is my kitten. She's back. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> Come in, sweetie. Bear is here. Now, this is based on my family, but I'm telling you, it's fun. It's exciting. It's action-packed. And it totally makes sense why there's a Hulkapotamus in it. I promise you. My daughter was five when she came up with it, but it makes sense. It's not done in this hokey, cheesy, you know, silly, spoofy kind of way. It makes sense why the character is brought into this comic. Um, this is an adult story, but it's an adult story that is suitable for kids, if that makes any sense. It's not a kid story suitable for adults. It's the other way around. So come check it out. Because you know what? 
It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Check it out. Funny little story. Rob originally drew this where she was straight on, and I was like, dude, her head's in his crotch. Move her over. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not a good look, man. Move it over. <laughs> so we have 54 backers, $2,738. This is not doing anywhere near tragedy numbers, which I understand, you know, tragedy is a whole different beast. But if you like my writing and if you and appreciate superhero comics that are written for the sheer reason of entertainment, you going to bed? Well, let me say goodnight. Then check out my writing. Hello. Sleep well, sweet dreams. God bless, little bear. Or should we call you Gamora Sakura? Oh, Sakura Gamora. Little mighty, I love you. Good night. Say good night. Good night. Oh, listen. Don't forget, we're leaving for the convention tomorrow morning. You have to be up by 7, and we have to be out by 7.30. You hear me? Butt nuggets. Butt nuggets. Okay. <laughs> Melanie, don't make me late tomorrow. I'll whoop you. I'm kidding. I don't whoop my kids. They whoop me. So anyway, to wrap this up, uh, as far as the dynamics, uh, don't be fooled. It's not a child story. It's a good story with superheroes. And especially if you're a parent, you're going to appreciate this book. I'm very serious about that. Give it a shot. Yes. And go get the Kenny Calderon cover, the Model Zapata cover, the Robert Powers cover, the Martha May the Schwartz be with you cover, the uh, Eddie Kid cover. Let's do this, Brutus, because I ain't new to this. All right. I'm, I'm going to limit you to one. One mm -hmm. time. Say per stream, just one. <laughs> <laughs> one there time. is Bailey. Hello, Bailey. Hello, That's the big fuzzy cat. I call him Snarf. Snarf, 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 Snarf. It's a cute cat. Yeah, he's awesome. All right, he's Kenny, how's that? How's your Thundercats going? Is it? Have you done any more to it? No, I have not. <laughs> because um, I've been I've been working on the website and uh, yeah. and working on tragedy. We might have to have a return to the other <laughs> other pictures to get them done. My mm -hmm. my Hanna Barbera is a bit the same. It's it's stopped for a minute. Yeah. And and you know it it that it's definitely an eye grabber. Like mm. I just kind of had it open in the last con that I did. Yeah. And you know people just kind of stopped and would like, oh, can I take a picture of it? My dad loves this cartoon. You know. Yeah. So I know the I know the print will do pretty well, especially if I cover yeah. it. That Hanna Barbera though, that's that's, that's Word really him up. a sick looking I'm, piece. I'm hoping it has the same effect. Uh, Word. No, absolutely. I mean, because because you have so first of all, it's the color, the the colors in that piece are immediately eye catching. Yeah, they're super bright. That's for sure. And then, and then you know, you're almost forced into having to, you know, like look at every character. Yeah. You know, like like every even though you know composition wise, you know, you, you work your your real estate as best as you could. Yeah. You know, every character. Tough, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, I would imagine. I, I listen, dude. I would have to take that same concept and spread it over several pieces. Yeah, you know what I mean? like, probably, like, probably in hindsight, I should have done that. It was um, very crowded in the end, but I don't know. Um, Let me get off. I wanted to really try and get it all in one. Yeah, you made it work. You made it work. Yeah, thanks, man. You know, and 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 you did it in a way where. Every character feels like they're in their own space. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think the landscape behind helps that a little bit. You know, gives it a bit True. of feeling like it's vast. You know. Yeah. 
Anyway, so yeah, that'd be nice to finish that and, and move on to some of those that massive list that you and I wrote down of legendary live stream paintings and drawings. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to get to a point where I'm painting something online. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That's that's uh I think I that's think, the plan, Stan. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we go. I think um uh the next one may be either Silverhawks. Ooh. Yes. Nice. Or uh Doom Patrol. Ooh, how about Doom gargoyles? Patrol. Nice. How about gargoyles? If we, if we do cartoon properties and stuff, that'd I, be cool. Yeah, I, I gotta put a, a gargoyles one that actually came to mind like last night. I was sitting here working on some pages and um, had YouTube playing in the background, and uh, they were doing like a gargoyle retrospective, and and I I thought of gar doing a gargoyles piece, you know, just to kind of fill out the 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 list of loop shots. That sounds awesome. A nice, a nice gargoyle shot, you know, with the with the city landscape in the back, or maybe like yeah, yeah. Uh, Brooklyn Bridge or something. And that that could be crazy. that would be very cool, man. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe um, I want to get the Yasagi Yajimba one that's right, rattling right around in my brain. I want to do that next. That um, one, that one, I'm really excited to see you do. Yeah, I want to do yeah. that. I want to you, do it in you sort have of such, um, a, such a unique texture to your work and your penmanship that I'm I'm excited to see what you do with that. Yeah, thanks, man. I, I kind of really wanted to give it that real um, traditional Asian uh, look of the, the the browns and the the natural colors, you know. Right, right. Um, like the Edo, the Edo period, yes. kind of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm thinking that. Then I'd, then I'd love. To, I'm tossing up between either doing Battle of the Planets after that, or um, mm. or uh, even even giving GI Joe a go. Actually, thinking wow. of GI Joe. Nice. So I've been drawing GI Joe. Euro, you know. I've heard that, but I haven't. Um, I've never drawn GI Joe before, so it'd be interesting to give that a shot. Oh, that's that's cool. My yeah. you know, my only experience with GI Joe has only been like drawing uh, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow fighting. Like I've yeah, right. Okay. A couple times. Yeah, fun. That could be cool. I would really like to see you do like a legit G Force. Yeah, that's that. I, I've always wanted to do it. I, that's my that's my favorite cartoon when I was a kid. It was Battle of the Planets, you know. That's Check that the right song. there. I I know for a fact you're gonna like that one. That one you're gonna knock out of the park for sure. I just don't know. I don't know how much how many people really know about that property anymore. Though is it, is it a dead thing or is it? No, not at no, all. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Look, I've come across. I've come across kids that are that are like familiar with Messenger Z. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean, and, yeah. and familiar with like you know Battle of the Planets and and Gotcha Man and you know what yeah, I mean nice. like there's there's a there's a very dedicated fandom to that stuff Sorry. that like ah, okay you know if they're if they're interested in something that's modern like they they have like that uh, that motivation to sort of like go back and see where things came from okay. That like even even me, I'm surprised that like someone younger than me would would know what that yeah. is. But, yeah, yeah, that's know, cool. Something it like was that uh, fr is what, my is friend Sean fun. Chen. Yep. Ooh, yeah. This I saw this. This is really well done. My friend Sean Chen. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, drew this, and I bought it. That's incredible. Nice. I love the perspective. It's badass. Great job on the inking and just the, the, yeah. the foreshortening of her yo-yo coming at you. Yeah, sure. Nice. Sean's Great stuff, man. Yeah, that's, that's right here. It's to the right on my wall here. That's another property that I'm surprised I haven't really done anything properly with. Like, 
it's kind of i don't know whether it's a licensing yeah. issue with it so you know there was a live action uh japanese film I don't know, because there is some race a few years back that was actually really well done yeah i saw the, i saw the trailer for that i just don't know whether it's a, a sandy frank issue you know or uh true um whether it's, you know i don't know i don't know but the contestant I, between G-Force like and Gachaman and yeah. Battle of the Planets. Yeah. I, honestly, I wouldn't want an American iteration of no. <laughs> I'm afraid no. that they would screw that up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's it's like when you see them do um Ghost in a Shell and things like that. Oh yeah. That you know that broke my heart. Yeah. Because Ghost in the Shell, that was that was around the time that I was that I had just discovered anime. Yeah, and, yeah. And and that was that was one of the things that kind of like consumed me, like Ghost in the yeah. Shell, Ninja Scroll, uh, Apple Seed. Blue. I liked Apple Seed. That was good. Apple Seed was fantastic. And um, I and I actually prefer the cell animated version over the CG. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I loved Akira. Akira was one of my favorites. Oh yeah, masterpiece, masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Like just just on the on the level of uh, the detail and the body horror and and yeah, you know, I've never seen that before. I'm looking forward to see what they do with the series. What's this oh, film now? What's they're, that? They're Akira. making an Akira series that will that is basically the manga. Okay. So a lot of what was left out in the movie, you know, will be will be highlighted in the manga. I mean, nice. The, uh, yeah. I just never understood the ending to that movie because it, it was very um ambiguous. It was kind of ambiguous, but it it you know it lent itself to to deeper. More philosophical uh, interpretations, right? Right, like uh, like Evangelion. Yes. I had a discussion yeah, with my students last night. Evangelion is a great a great movie, but like you gotta mentally prepare yourself to watch Evangelion. It's so depressing. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Melanie's going to bed. But she asked Will if she, he could show her that whole the whole piece for a moment. Oh the right, withered. sorry. Yep. There yeah, she goes. Is that for withered? Look at the demons. It's gonna paint that in. That's cool. She just said that, that's is that amazing. Green? Is that yeah, she just yet? said that's amazing. Oh, thanks. And he's not even done. He just did the background so far. But look at that, the lava flow. I'm just working on his face at the moment. You love what? Like he's done. Silhouette of time. Yeah, she said she loves the silhouette you did of the time beast. Oh, yes, yeah. Thanks. Very nice, very nice. Just wait until it's done. This is going to be a cover. It's going to be awesome. That piece would be amazing on a print. Yeah, yeah like I... I'm going to make... Actually, I was going to make it a metal print. That would Oof. be cool. No, you can leave it open, thanks. Yeah, I'm going to make it a metal print um, at some point, and it's going to be a foil option. It's going to be incredible looking as a foil. Oof, Absolutely. Nice and, and shiny. Uh, and I'm going to look into it as a lenticular. Oh, mm. mm, fancy. Mm. I remember I bought a Ghost Rider back in the day. It had a glow-in-the-dark cover. Did you ever have that one? Actually, it's funny. I was about to tell you that's the other thing I'm looking into. There's a printer I work with that does glow in the dark. I just have to see if the colors make sense for the glow in dark with the with the green and the yeah. You know, I mean that. that would, but I don't know about that. That one would. For sure. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't know. And the, his body, it may not work. It might be but, something where you painted in that monochromatic greens and blacks and right. And but uh, I do want to do a black and white of just the tragedy mask. Yeah, I mean, um, a glow in the dark. Shazam! Great job in that background, Kenny. So far, thank you. The trick is to 
make it feel like full. Yeah. But, mm. you know, kind of be ambiguous about what's back there, right? Leave it up to the imagination. We our pictures came back. We're gonna wrap it up in a few minutes though, uh, because yep. I do want to spend some time with my wife. I don't yep. get to see her, I'm not gonna see her at all tomorrow. We work a lot, cool. and she works a lot too. Shout out to my wife, she's not just a gorgeous supermodel, but she is not a prima donna at all. She rolls up her sleeves and she gets to work. I mean, she'll do carpentry. She laid down flooring in our kitchen, for Christ's sake, because I was working. She's just, uh, my wife is the best. She's hardworking. She's she's not one of those pretty women that, that, you know, expects things to be done for her. She goes in and she does it and she doesn't give, she'll, she'll get under a car and change oil. You know, she just doesn't care. She's, it's got to get done, it gets done. Yeah. Charles says hello, Steph. <laughs> she said hi back. Kenny and Will didn't say hello. They were like, F you. <laughs> They're like, we see enough of you on video. F off. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I'm lucky. I married up and I know it. Yeah. But it's funny, you know, years ago when we started dating and she was younger, I was younger. I still obviously look older. I'm 15 years older than my wife. Um, not mature wise, just chronologically as far as age. You know. But um, we go into this Chinese food place, and uh, and I'm not making fun of Chinese people, but this is actually how he sounded. So just so you know. Uh, but the woman, she goes, "Oh, is this your daughter?" I go, "No," and the guy in the background goes, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. And next time, if that ever happens again, I'm going to go, why, yes, it is, and then I'm going to kiss her. It's going to be hilarious. Wow. Oh. We do not allow some things in this restaurant. Croissant. I love you, kiddo. Yeah, tickly beard. I got to shave. I know. Makes me look old. I got to get a haircut, too. It's funny because when, you, when you're when you balding, it looks even worse when the hair that you do have gets too long. And I don't want to be I don't want to be those guys that like he's overcompensating for the, the hairline by growing a ponytail or, a, or um, you know, doing a comb over. I ain't doing that shit. Yeah, I told my wife, listen, if I ever lose my mind and I see the comb over, she is to drug me and shave my head. <laughs> but I'm gonna grow I'm gonna grow bald gracefully. I'm simply gonna do the Charlie Brown squiggle and wear a t-shirt. The Charlie Brown t-shirt. And we're gonna do <laughs> right. I just but I'm smarter and not to try to kick the football. <laughs> yeah, in the slave outfit. So, work in progress by Chris Borman. Very nice. Very nice. Sweet candy nuts. Good night, Good night bear. Is that watercolor? Good night, sweet. It looks like watercolor. What's that? No. No. You just sent me another one. Like what do you send me? Oh, the other one. Or just. Very cool. So he's working on that. Sweet caminots. Charles is texting me on the side. Just talking to chat, dude. Roy Ricardo, what's going on? He said, those are looking good, Kenny Will. Roy has a cover to Withered as well. Let's show off Roy Mercado's cover. Mm. Why not? Indeed. Mm. Yeah, sorry. Hang on, guys. I got to find it. I mean, I know where it is, but I got to go.
Colored by Fabio. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it's not but a light spread. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there a delay? Jeez. So I love Fabio and Adi have a child. <laughs> yeah. So this is, you see it. Will's covered and withered. <laughs> I can't believe it's not a butter light spread. So here's a uh, yellow let me get to the chopper. <laughs> Everybody get to the chopper. Get to the chopper with the with the butter oh, in here. Give me, give me now. <laughs> Now everybody get to, everybody get to the chopper. Now get to the chopper now. Right, there's um, how many times does he say the chopper in that movie? What's the count? <laughs> That's what I don't know. But there's Will's cover the withered, and now here is Roy Mercado. I have another one I'm going to premiere soon. Uh, but here is Roy Mercado. Ooh, ooh. nice indeed. Indeed, like they're attached at the penis. That's great. Look at, look at the contrast between the two He's sides. Good. He's, good. He's good. Very good. I thought you said you would let me live. I lied. I thought you said you would kill me last. I lied. <laughs> you can't trust I think the Asian man was supposed to say you hit the jackpot to fill. <laughs> Roy, you racist. Stop Asian <laughs> Anyway, that's a cool cover. It'll be a nice one to trade dressed. Absolutely. Indeed. Absolutely. And he did it digitally, so it didn't take 85 fucking years to do. <laughs> you know, I'm kidding. <laughs> True. I'm kidding. They're, cover they're both covers are badass. And I have another one that's that, that's coming that was painted, and that's cool. And uh, it's going to be fun. We're just going to have three covers, but I'm going to offer – I'm going to try to get lenticular going on. And limited. Let me do one for fun. Just for fun. What's that? Let me do one just for fun. A wither yes. cover? Yeah. yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it now. Do it. Do it, do it now. Just, just for fun. Just the, you know. For the hell of it. Just for giggles. Yeah, just for giggles. That, that was the Dynamics cover. I did that just for giggles. Just for giggles. Just for shits and giggles. Yeah. I like I like those little those little you know prompted unprompted challenges. Impromptu. Do it. Tesla is hiring. What? As, get these as, as, as a matter of fact, Will, you know, if yes. uh, if you get an opportunity, shoot mm -hmm. me some of those uh, some of those character concepts. Like, oh, for bit. the love of God, I can send them. He's got enough to do. For the love of God, to Will. <laughs> I like talking to Will. Let me talk to Will. <laughs> for the love of God, someone's got to like talking to him. <laughs> Talk to Will, all right? You know, I talked yeah. to you enough. Talk to Will. I'll send him over. You, oh. you want high res? Say it again. You want high res, or you just want straight? Nah, it doesn't matter. I just like something general. Something general. Yep. Yeah. So check this out. Guess what's about to be added to the Dynamics campaign? Joe Ryan. Joe Ryan. <laughs> no. uh, original art, original art tier, uh, commission tier from Christopher Ivy. Chris Ivy was a Marvel DC artist. Ooh. Yeah, Chris Ivy drew one of my favorite all time books that a lot of people don't know about. It was called Sovereign Seven by uh, Chris Claremont. Sovereign Seven. Love that book, Chris Claremont, DC. When they when he left X Men and Marvel, he went over did Sovereign Seven for DC. Oh yeah, it was a great book. It only lasts like forty issues or something. Forty, great book. Yeah. I have the entire run upstairs. Sweet candy nuts. See, what I see. By the way, uh, 
Alex and Gary are killing it on 39 Cedar Lane. Yeah, they are. That they definitely are. I can't wait to put this because people are, are uh, getting caught off guard. I'm not going to say any more than that. Mm-hmm. Will read it. It was great. I liked it. Loved it. All loved five the stories. Feel good. All five stories are getting great reviews from horror fans, true horror fans. And Kenny is going to be drawing Ashes to Ashes. Yes, I saw that on the list. Good yeah. reveal. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do... Uh, I have... Uh, some character sheets for that. Nice. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, man, I'm excited for this horror magazine, Diary of Dread. Um, now... Sir William. Yes, sir. Did I talk to you about the first and last page of the magazine? Uh, briefly. I want you to illustrate those. Yes. Jesus. Yeah, he'll have time. Well-played <laughs> show. Well, think about it. Uh, you know, I want him involved in the heart. I think I'm. I think I'm cooking under these lamps at the moment. I'm going to be silly. It's like five thousand degrees under these ring lights. I thought I smelled bacon. Oh. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm but going into you, mild shock. I told you what the mascots for Diary of Dread are, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, you're going to uh, do that opening splash page and the ending splash page. I'm letting you do the talking because I don't want to spoil anything. But yeah. just so, just yes or no, are you going to do those for me? Yes, I think. Yep, that's what we agreed to. Okay. Yeah, they'll be after Withered is done, and you know, you know, you can get them done in two days, three days, probably. They're not interesting. Yes. Not- it's not a whole story or anything. No, and it'll be great to have you as part of it, especially since you're a big horror fan and you're awesome at the horror, the classic horror. Um, Love the horror. You know what I was. I was really digging your, your gory lorry stuff, uh, Will. Oh, yeah. thanks, man. So is IDW. Um, the Frankenstein's monster, it, the Universal monsters are all um, public domain, correct? Yeah. Uh, the, the stories are. The depiction of them are not. So you can do a Frankenstein. You just can't do Boris Karloff as Frankenstein. Right. right. I was just so wondering just could... because the ones you did, maybe for fun, we could do a pinup gallery in the magazine or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, for sure. There are some monsters, that'd be fun. Yeah, um, you, can do a bri- you can do a broader Frankenstein, you just can't do an Elsa <coughs> Lancaster Frank- right. Frankenstein. Yeah. Well, we're going to have 154 pages in that ca- that ca- that uh, magazine. Now, oh, yeah, nice. I, I'm I'm not for magazines for superhero stories. They're not going to sell well. People don't store them well. They don't like it. But I polled a lot of horror fans, real horror fans. Yeah. Will that translate to sales? I don't know. But they all prefer magazine. And when you look at yeah. horror, it's always in magazine form. Yep. Look at Fangoria and Cinema, cinema Effects and all those classics and are all see, in magazine form. Yeah, and yep. even now there's there's a couple of uh, horror magazines that sell decently that are in comic stores. So well, Marvel Marvel did it with the Fred Nightmare and Elm Street stuff. In yeah, comics, and so. Joe Jusco cover. Yeah, yeah, yep. I got them. Um, all. They're great. So this will be a horror magazine. It's 154 pages. Uh, I'm looking into, but they're not responding as usual. Um, written interviews in the magazines at the beginning and the end with some creators I'm not going to mention that are key in the horror world. Um, Very cool. uh, not to go too dark, but I have to, I have to say it does get a little frustrating when people see your messages and they purposely just ignore them. Uh, yeah. I know that maybe you see it while you're in the middle of something and you go to go back and you forget. But when you send the message again a month later following up and then a month later following up or 
you even text the person because you know them well enough that you have their phone number and they just ignore it blatantly. It's really disrespectful and it's not professional and it just makes you look like an elitist jerk off. And it really, lack of correspondence to me, I find to be the most disrespectful thing you can do because you know, you could get mad at me. You can get mad at people you love and curse them out or whatever. And then you make up and you're fine. But when you act like someone doesn't exist, that's got to be the most disrespect you can ever show anyone. They're so unimportant that they don't even exist. They don't, they're not even right. worth a response. Yeah. And I would really wish that some of these more well-known names would show respect. Um, you know, but what are you going to do? You can't make them. Um mm -hmm. But meanwhile, they want to solicit you when they're selling their, their shit. Yeah. So, and it's it's really a shame. It's really a shame. You know, I mean, if I'm fortunate to get big, uh, I, I can never do that to anybody. And, you know, I don't like to use the word fans. I use supporters. But if it wasn't for the people that spend the money and go show over you, you wouldn't have the life you have. So what's the harm in a three second response, especially if it's someone, you know, especially if it's a business inquiry, it's not just some nutty, you know, fanatic that's saying something stupid or, or spamming you, you know, respond. It's the mm -hmm. professional thing to do. It's the polite, respectful thing to do. And it's what you would want. So, you know, buck up and, and put your pants on and, and be an adult. Mm -hmm. And that's my soapbox for the day. Because I don't care how big a name is. Show some freaking respect. Because if you don't respect me not responding, what bridge am I burning to begin with? Mm -hmm. But watch if I make it big. Just watch how all of a sudden they respond to you. And they're, they're on your post saying, hey, happy birthday to you kids and how much they like you. It's all, it's so fake. You know, the comic industry has become like small Hollywood. Fake relationships, fake friendships, fake little clubs. It, you know, it's just and clicks and it's just stupid and if you look at people when they do they'll put like big name artists will will respond on a, a person's post and you're like oh they're friends with them no that person just buys a lot of their artwork and they're trying to make sure they continue to buy a lot of <laughs> Going out. And well, there are some people in the industry that are still good friends, good, genuine people. Billy Tucci's been a good friend to me. He's a good guy. Responds, reaches out, hangs out. Uh, Larry Stroman responds, talks with me often. Good man, you know, done nice things for me. You know, Sean Chen. So they're... Um, you know, there are good people in the industry, don't get me wrong, but some of them are just so fake and full of shit. It's it's ridiculous. And then you watch fans, like if they respond on a post, fans are all over that that big name's response just to get a response from them. Like that you feel validated because of big name. Right. Heidi or something about themselves. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. Yep. Phil, I was friends with you back when you were nothing. <laughs> I'm still nothing <laughs> right now. I'm still nowhere. You know, people perceive me as being successful and doing stuff, and I appreciate that, but I don't, I don't see it. Thousands. You're all over the place. And, you know, I, I truly appreciate that, but I just, I don't see it. I don't feel I've accomplished anything yet. And maybe that's just my hunger, you know? <clears throat> I don't know if, uh, if we're coming through. Am I, is my audio lost or? You were glitchy for a bit. Yeah. Okay. But I, I, I was... can never tell whether it's my connection or not. I think it's mine, but um, I was just saying that maybe it's my hunger, but I don't feel like I've accomplished anything yet. And there are people that feel I've accomplished a lot, and I just I don't 
see it. I don't feel it. You know? Yeah. I don't need to be rich. I don't need to be famous. But I would like people to just show enough respect that if I reach out to you, you give me a freaking response. That's it. <laughs> I'm serious about that, too. Yeah. You know? Or just don't think you're too good to be doing a cover on my book or some stupid thing like that. Right. Indeed. We're going to wrap this up in a few minutes. I don't know if Gerald left or if he's with us, but Gerald, show us what you got because we're going to be heading out soon. Greg Johnston, better late than never. Did you have a gig tonight, my friend? He said, hey, guys. Hey, hey Greg. By the way, um, did people get the campaigns yet? I mean, uh, someone had mentioned, Rally said that he got both campaigns before. I know Charles did, but I sent out the pros book at the beginning. Oh, I'm losing him again. Yep. <clears throat> Turn it to a Dalek. <laughs> Greg would have gotten tragedy by now, but I don't know if you got the pro. You wouldn't have got the pros book yet because you ordered six, and I have to. I'm waiting for the printer to send them to me. It's been over a month. But Greg, did you get tragedy? Oh, you got the tragedy. All right, cool. The real tragedy is dealing with Will. <laughs> hey, I deal with him every day. It's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea. I heard his wife's voice for the first time today. I, you know, she's a lovely woman. She's intelligent. She's beautiful. And I was like, I think he made her up or she's like, a, just <laughs> he, stole, he took the picture <laughs> off of Google. Uh, but I actually spoke to her in person today and I was like, whoa, she does exist. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, thanks for your vote of confidence, Phil. I appreciate your support. <laughs> 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 get a bunch of your book we may need more um I don't know what get a bunch of your book means got a bunch of my books you're getting a bunch of my books other people should get a bunch of my books what is that in english greg everybody wants to get a bunch of your book <laughs> look at the way <laughs> you're doing the lighting on his face it's just fantastic damn oh my lord just to have the internal vision of what that should look like is, is impressive to me. I feel like with enough practice, and don't get me wrong, it's years and years of practice, so I'm not downplaying it. I think muscle memory kicks in. You can learn the physical techniques, right? But to me, the most impressive thing about artists is envisioning the angle in your head, envisioning what a light source would look like reflecting off something, and being able to recreate that, just having the vision of what it should look like to me is impressive as hell. You know, or like the proportions of the angle of that back, that, um, that um, uh, billboard behind them, you know, or, or the proportions of them to each other. It's just, right. it's amazing that you can envision that in your head as if, and then make it this real thing. Well, that's, that's uh part of it is definitely muscle memory but a big crucial part of it is uh problem solving right yes like when, yeah when you do studies you're solving problems right you're you're like rendering the problem over and over again right to where right. now you're starting to see it with more clarity right you know what I mean? And <clears throat> so once once you need to apply what you what you resolved on your own, you know, it feels like how you describe, like it's you know, like it's something that's all, oh, you know, like mind blown, but it's something that you know, it's it it requires that repetition, that that TLC. <clears throat> like very very little, very little is actual talent. The, the majority of it is definitely muscle memory. Well, you know, another example, when we first saw Will working on uh, Satan's face, mm -hmm. 
obviously it's a rough it's it's raw and he's just laying down like the flat tonal co- the flat color to it before he's like really rendering and putting tonal um qualities and, and you know and and everything to it right but to look at it and go, is that going to look good? And then it looks brilliant. It's like that transition is just awe-inspiring. It's amazing. You know, to, a rough looks like these rough circles and scratches, and then all of a sudden right. it becomes this refined, tight, wonderful thing. What's the matter? See what you're talking about. <coughs> Rocky. Is it Rocky? You're not in here. Look under the table. I know, sweetheart, but you should be asleep. You got to be up early. Let's go. It's nine thirty. Uh, we're gonna wrap this up in a few minutes. Jerry yep, yep. left uh, before, so I guess he didn't draw with it. Uh, Greg said, "You need to make sure you order enough. Six probably is not enough for what I want to do. We will talk. What are you gonna do? A book burning?" <laughs> <laughs> You can have a bonfire in my books. <laughs> Order more, Phil. Order more, Phil. <laughs> he's gonna invite me to a, a, a party in his house. He's got it. He's got the fire pit going. I'm like, that looks like is that a little cover? Are you burning my books? There's a quiet <laughs> evening with the cult, you know. <laughs> it's a quiet, you know. Goat? Is that cold? Quiet Friday night with the cult. <laughs> is that goat blood? What is that? What is I'm that? I'm not drinking out of that chalice. What is that? <laughs> and he's like, it's fruit punch. That's not fruit punch. That shit's too thick to be fruit punch. What is that? Is that your Lost Boys reference? It's They're already noodles, Michael. <laughs> it's for you. He said I no, caught him. He's going to do a book yeah. burning party. Yeah, we know what's going on, Greg. Wanted in three states, Greg. (laughs) (laughs) See, that's the thing is, he's not buying them. He wants me to print them. (laughs) Yeah, I always thought that's funny when people buy something just to burn it or smash it and protest. I'm like, you just made the money, you jackass. They don't care. You You supported the product. Yeah. Yeah, they don't care what you do with it after you paid for it, you retards. So then you brought attention to it by burning it. Well, look at how, look at the mouse, the mouse sales that have gone up. From the banning yeah, of school, you know, know. like it's, yeah. like it's, it's given it a, a, a new intrigued uh, revenue. You know, I know. Very interesting. Sometimes, and I'm not kidding. Call me a conspiracy Thank theorist. You. Sometimes I think companies do that on purpose because they know that controversy sells, and when they're trying to stay, I mean, look at, look at what um, actors do to stay relevant. They'll say something controversial because they know it's going to spark their career again. It's going to get them in the limelight. It's like children, negative attention is better than no attention. So sometimes I think companies with their products that maybe aren't booming like they thought or whatever, including movies, they will, they will fabricate some backlash, some issue, some, you know, protest, to make people mm-hmm. go, well, what's all this buzz about? This is interesting. Now I'm curious what the what the buzz is about. Let me go buy it and read it, you know? Yeah. Right. I do think it's a marketing tactic for some. I agree. Right, Phil, Greg's- do you want do you want just a quick question? On the back of the devil's throne here, do you want his head to be resting on a nice sort of leathery cushion or you just want it to be all stone? You could do the cushion. He's kind of okay. a prima donna. So yeah. Greg well, is you want back to be comfortable. To, yeah. Greg is back to speaking like he's drunk. Bed publicly is still <laughs> publicly. Uh, Greg, is hard work, a lot of work. Um, is that code for Jägermeister? <laughs> <laughs> I love Greg. I'm just busting his chops. Greg is a great guy. But uh, it's oh, funny. Wow, Bed turkey. publicly is still publicly. <laughs> Publicity is still publicly. I mean, I don't know. Publicity is still publicity, is what you're to say. Book burning sponsored by Jack Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> pour it on your pour it down your gullet or pour it on the fire. Either way. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good time. Yeah. <laughs> uh. That's funny. 
I hope you're writing all these down, Phil. This is the merchandise right happening right now. This is all the stuff, your T-shirts, your mugs. I'm telling you. I might actually do a, a, a bunch of live stream T-shirts where we have some of the sayings with some of your art yeah. on it. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Sounds like good. we'll put some of the art that you worked on on the live stream and we'll put up in a world. Where in a world. Ryan. It'll be like <laughs> in a world where Joe Ryan dot, dot, dot. You know, yeah, and then we'll have another one where it says "sweet candy nuts." <laughs> you know, and, so. uh, we uh, could do that. Dad shoes, you know? dad shoes, dad shoes. I was gonna say that. Dad yeah, um, Phil's not Indeed. six foot one. Yes, yes. Indeed. Blink, blink once if you're in trouble. You know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll have a picture of of your your cover to the devils in the details, and it'll say Greg's book book burning party. Yes, <laughs> BYO, BYO heavy liquor. Yeah, and we and sponsored by. <laughs> wow. and, we could, and we could do a series of these shirts. Wouldn't that be cool? Perfect. And on the back, it'll say "Legendary Illustrations Live Art Stream Friday nights at seven p.m." There you go, fridge magnet. Wouldn't that be cool? It'd be very cool. He said, my cult needed a virgin for a sacrifice, so I went to a comic convention. Oh, snap. Nice. Oh, snap. Jesus. 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 That wild turkey. Wild turkey. Wild turkey. Wow. <laughs> Green just shit the bed. I, I, I think that uh, that scene would be perfect for uh, for one of your horror stories. Just a little cutaway, you know, like they're running through the forest. They come across the cult and book burning, just by accident. Nice. That just happens. You want to know what's yeah. funny? I literally just came up with a horror story in my head right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Do tell. I will not, not publicly. Greg gave me the idea just by what he was saying. And no, it doesn't have to do with a virgin sacrifice. And yes, Greg, it's already copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he meant virgin cupboards. <laughs> yes. You know, Greg will not. Yo, it. dude, I put on Vox Machina yesterday, season two, and that oh. first episode was balls to the wall, badass. Yeah. Four huge ass dragons just to decimate the, the city and they get out barely. One is, you know, an acid dragon, one's a frost dragon, one's a fire dragon, and one is a, a you know, a poison gas dragon. And it's just, it is just badass. Now, the what first it? season, it's called Vox Machina. Um, it's a cartoon on Amazon. It's Dungeons and Dragons, oh. but they curse their sexuality. It's hilarious, actually. But it's I great. didn't know which one you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Now the first okay. season, the first episode, um, is like okay. What is this? The second episode is more okay, and then it just really picks up from there, and it's a really solid story. But season two, I'm not kidding, man. The first episode was epic. It was just balls to the wall it starts right away and it ends like the whole the whole episode is them just surviving in this dragon attack and the dragons are immensely powerful really respected because you know you look at dragons in mythology these days and they're really not as badass as they should be it's like how is a human taking out a dragon get the fuck out of here these yeah, things they're, not, they're, they're just not respected anymore they don't they, they're not they're really not no. But they decimate this kingdom. I mean, they destroy, they poison people, burn them. Whoa. Yes, the people from Amazon. Critical Role. It? Yes, it's from Critical Role. Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's well worth the watch. It really, Vox Machina. It's really good. And they're starting to get into more like spiritual stuff in a sense. Like there's this giant, they, they have like their giant strong guy. And he's like yeah. really dumb, but he's very strong. <laughs> Uh, bless you. And he's yeah. going through this trial right now to find where his strength is and stuff. It's it's good. It's good. It's good. But we're going to wrap this up, fellas. F fellas, we're going to wrap this up, fellas. Okay, because it's time to go. <laughs> is that the Travolta coming back again? 
No, that's the guy <laughs> from the Jerky Boys. You don't remember the Jerky Boys with their phone calls? <laughs> no, <laughs> I missed that one. Yeah, you got you got to listen to those. Those are funny. Yeah, one of the Jerky Boys. Uh, he wanted his daughter to learn the drums from me. Ah. So to be a student. Yeah. He. Oh. The guy. Yes. We're losing him. <laughs> he did the voice. It's the epilepsy again. Excuse yep. me, miss. Can you please tell me? Can you please tell me? <laughs> they yeah. were now. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. What's funny is all the hair on your arms makes you look like a gorilla. I am. I'm a Wookiee. Yes. Yeah. It's just a shabby start on my head. Going on the arms, fine. Just not on the head. Did you ever see that meme where it has He Man with his fur, you know, underwear, and then it has Chewbacca with no hair and the and the same shape on his crotch? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. fucking hilarious. This is the one where He Man's on the toilet and Battle Cat's paws coming under the under the door. <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Grog. That's his name. Grog is awesome. Yeah, the the, the Vox Machina is really good. I like it. Uh, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, but you also like a little, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, oh my God, what is this? That style. Um, wow, I'm tired. Uh, what is that genre that incorporates like metal, like in mechanics, but you like with an old classic, um, like steampunk? Steampunk. steampunk thank you. If you like like a mixture of D and D and a little steampunk, uh, you will enjoy nice. this story. It's good. It's good. The characters are interesting too, and a good storyline, uh, good plot, good action, humor. Now there is some. I wouldn't say it's for kids. There's cursing. There's sexual undertones a lot. There's even like slight homosexual undertones, but nothing serious. But it's all like tongue in cheek. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not like any, um, any agenda driven stuff. It's just tongue in cheek, fun, uh, and action. And I like it. It's good. Cool. All right. Man, that's looking, looking so good. Both of you guys fantastic work. All right. Um, Kenny, what do you got to say before we go? Uh, support the Dynamics Kickstarter. Even if you don't get the Dynamics number one, there's tons of good stuff on there, right? You can always support the art books or, you know, get some original art commissions. I'm always open for that. Um, if you happen to be in Miami uh, next month, I'll be at Beyond Comic Con February 18th. Uh, and yeah, follow me on Instagram. Wild underscore inks with an X underscore Ken. And you're on the TikToks. And I am on the TikToks under the same name, Wild Inks Ken. Love it. Indeed. And you, Sir William of the Playdens? Well, no. Uh... No local comic kind of appearance for me, but um, certainly I would reiterate what Kenny said in terms of supporting the book, supporting um, the legendary art books, the commissions. It's all there in terms of even jumping the queue in terms of getting um, art commissions done because we've all got mm -hmm. a bit of a queue at the moment. Yep. Um, and I think, yeah, just uh, <clears throat> like and subscribe on everything on the uh, – YouTube on the on the Facebook, the Instagrams, follow along and and get some art reveals and behind the scenes stuff as we go. Mm -hmm. For cool. sure. And that, again, that's the dynamics. Uh, I am going to just reiterate what they said. Please go support the dynamics campaign. Pick any one of the amazing tiers that are on there. You'd be supporting artists and creative teams and, you know, letterers and inkers and myself. You would help Phil Bell Publishing grow even faster. And you're honestly going to walk away with some quality uh, entertainment, quality stories. So that's about that. Uh, I would also say keep an eye out uh, for my website, 
and sales and contests. And just remind everybody, the writer contest scripts are due in by midnight on Tuesday. Again, when I say midnight, make sure you're aware of the time difference. I'm talking about Eastern Standard Time. I live in New York. Midnight, my time on Tuesday. So if you happen to be on the prison island over there with Will, he's the <laughs> day after. So make sure in the future. you understand. Yes. yes. If you're uh, central time, that's an hour or two hour difference now. If you're on the West Coast, that's a three hour difference. You've got to be mindful of that because I can't bend the rules for anybody, okay? And to be honest with you, if you can't follow simple rules, no publisher is going to want to deal with you. Uh, that's just a fact. Well, so yeah. please, the seven people that are remaining that keep telling me, they, they, they you know, sending me messages that they're going to send it, you've got till Tuesday. You're running out of time. Get it in. And remember, you submit it to the Facebook page of Philbo Publishing, and you must be following that page or your script will not be accepted. Those are the rules of the contest. Okay? Uh, so far, we've got 16 submissions, really quality, solid stuff. Um, unfortunately, some of them are great. You know, the scripts are great, but they're not quite a genre that fits with the campaign, but we'll still take into consideration that they're really good. Um, so just, just please, uh, this is a great opportunity for writers, and it's on my dime. So I'm trying to help and support. So it's a good opportunity for you to give a shot. All right. Uh, and um, what's the other thing? Lastly, if you uh, have any questions about the Dynamics campaign, how it works on Kickstarter, or maybe there's some, we want the prose book, Devils in the Details, DM me and reach out to me, and we'll take care of it. Okay? Yep. Until the website's up, you can just DM me directly. But most importantly... I rep these wonderful artists and legendary illustrations. There's a bunch of us. Now, to be honest with you, we're getting to the point where I can't solicit uh, work for a lot of them because most of them are on two or three books at this point. But if yep. there's like one or two artists that are only on one or two books and they can do a third book. So reach out to me if you're interested in hiring a creative team because we can help you make your dream come true, make your book. Or we could just do nice commissions, or we could do covers. And even the people that are on three books, except for Will, because he's on 85 projects, can fit in <laughs> a Very cover. true. All right? We appreciate all of you and your support. Please, let's finish strong with the dynamics. I promise you it's a good story, and the writing is solid, and um, the art is fun and energetic and colorful and dynamic. And if you, if you question the truth and validity of what I say, you got one choice then. Go buy the book, read it, and you tell me if I'm wrong. I triple dog dare you. You tell him. See what happens. The dreaded, <laughs> the dreaded triple dog dare. <laughs> uh, can't take you anywhere. Can't take you anywhere. <laughs> They let him out every once in a while and look what happens. <laughs> Incorrect. They don't let me out at all. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Um, I, got, all I right. got the ankle bracelet so, for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Low jack for you. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's Leo. Right now, I'm adding on the dynamics. Uh, an original art commission tier by Marvel DC artist Chris Ivy. Christopher what? Ivy. Hey, what? Hey, what? 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 But he, but, but, but wait, it gets worse. This is something I do that other people don't do, though. When you get an original art tier from these guys, I still send you the, 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 the comic book in a digital PDF. So you're essentially getting my comic for free in PDF mm. form for supporting the artists. See, I do a lot mm -hmm. of little freebies. I give away a lot of stuff for people because I believe in the product, but I also want to, you know, people who are struggling with money or whatever to still be able to enjoy good things. So um, <clears throat> I would ask you to give it a shot. What you got to lose, yo? 
can be cut. Indeed. All right. While I put this on limited, I ask him to how many though, but I will say ten because I know that he's got the time. Oh. Okay. Original art commission by Marvel DC artist. I'm going to run out of room. Ah, crap. I'm going to do OA. That would be better. OA commission Marvel DC artist Chris Ivy. Yes, it fit. Well, I'm a rock star. <laughs> yes. Indeed. <laughs> now I gotta find some art samples of his to post to show. Indeed. All right, I'll take mm -hmm. care of that when we get off, and then I gotta get ready for the show tomorrow, and uh, I gotta be up early tomorrow. Yada yada yada. Tis what it is. No, not Chris Ivy singer. Chris Ivy comics. What you doing? What you doing, my boys? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. It's all about the he said, she said, boo. Um. Yeah, I'm just taking images so I can show what the man can do. He was on Moon Knight. Man, he's 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 one of those guys too that he's just a, a really talented artist, and uh, you wonder what's going on um, with the comic world when this guy is not getting regular work in comics anymore. You know what I'm saying, G? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying, yo? <laughs> Whatever you say. Maybe he's just tired of it. Yeah. No, what, what goes on is they lose, the editors move on and leave. They hire these new young editors that want to find their new fresh talent so they can say they uh, found them. And the, the older guys get, you know, kicked to the curb. I mean, Larry Stroman is not getting regular gigs, right? Billy Tucci's not getting regular gigs. Keith Williams doesn't get regular gigs. What What the hell? What, 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 what up, you man? What up with that? All right, gentlemen. It's time. It's time. Oh, it is time. <laughs> is your favorite part, Will? Jesus. He had nothing to do with it. He's got nothing to do with it. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you ready? No, I'm not ever. Because I know whatever I say <laughs> will echo an eternity. Echo an eternity. Oh, Sir William. All right. <laughs> Kenny. You have to be like he's Jonah. <laughs> Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not tabling tomorrow, Greg. I'm going as a fan. I, uh, I'm not doing any shows until some big ones at the end of the year. There, the, uh, I got to tell you, the tables are getting way more expensive. Uh, the crowds aren't spending money right now in this economy, and I'm not looking to lose money. I'd rather invest it into making better books, and into uh, a website that I can go strong with uh, oh, yeah. right now. I just think it's a smarter game plan. Uh, but I will be at shows more towards the end of the year. Anyway, but if you see me walking around tomorrow, I will have copies of Tragedy on me. You can stop me and say, hey, dude, I really want to buy an issue of Tragedy, and I'll have them for you. I'm pimping it, baby. 
<laughs> doing deals in the car park. It's the, the <laughs> yeah, right? It's the whole train. No, I'll be like with the long coat, and I'll be like, "You want it, man? You know you want it." Flash out the... <laughs> okay. Hey, kid, you want a you want a die cut sticker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the Steph Wilson die cut sticker. It's some boobies. All right. Or a Rolex. Yeah. <laughs> <We're wrong. laughs> Kenny. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. All right. Um be legendary. Have fun storming the castle. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kenny did his job and he did it very well. And I, and so I added a little razzle babble, right? Yes, he did the hand Vanna White hand modeling. <laughs> Repeat after me. Well, listen. Have fun storming the castle. Have fun storming the castle. That's better. That's better. I, I can't go eat the whole pictures like you. Instead of castle, <laughs> castle. Don't don't hold that a castle. Because they say castle. It's, <laughs> it's have fun storming the castle. Have fun storm in the castle. There we go. Might well better. I'm still something. I just mimic you. I'm not, I'm not making a movie. <laughs> no, I sound more like he does than you do. Have fun storm in the castle. Have fun storm in the castle. That's not praise, but anyway. Have fun storm in the castle. I sound like a retarded uh, redneck. Have fun storm in the castle. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say retarded these days. It offends people. I've worked with the oh, oh, people. They're wonderful people. Oh, redneck. Uh, anyway. Uh, redneck The thing is, red, or, rednecks or cult loving book burners. Either. But rednecks That's don't expensive. get offended by that. They'll they proudly say, "Yeah, I'm a redneck." So they they're not yeah. they don't see it as an offense. It's not an insult. They're fine with it. So, yeah. yeah, and we're we're not meaning to insult any cultish uh, secret societies out there either. That burn that books. book that exactly. book burn or drink Jack Daniels. Like if that's your choice. Hey, exactly. That's your thing. That's your thing, you know. Like, right. And anybody from the prison island, look, I'm not judging you. No, no. <laughs> don't come to my house. <laughs> Government, don't do it. <laughs> Seizing all the art. No, that's mine. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see on my arrest footage, it's just flying around the street in the rain. Like, <laughs> no, mother. <laughs> Get trodden on. Damn, Ozzy. <laughs> All right, guys. Be legendary and have fun storming the castle. There you go. See you later. Rats babble.